Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Is your name Slate Shannon? That's right. And this is Miss Duval. I'm very happy. Then I'm happy, too. Hello. My name is Cameron. I have a plantation outside of San Tomas. Sugar. Sugar? For the time being, just call me Sailor. What can we do for you, Mr. Cameron? I've never come to a man and, and begged before in my life. Well, then you've come to the wrong man. You don't have to beg anything from me. It's about a girl. A young girl. Wild, impetuous, and spoiled. No, thanks. Mr. Shannon already has one. Sailor, why don't you go and put a new point in our desk pen? Where am I going to get a new point? Post office is closed. Please. It's about my daughter. It's about Kathy. Kathy and the Blue Moon. Oh, yes. There's a gambling ship in the bay called the Blue Moon. Look, if you're a man in trouble, I'll listen to you. If all you want to do is hire someone to spank your daughter for gambling, get yourself somebody else. Because nobody else can do what I want you to do. You haven't told Slate yet what it is. Maybe he won't Do you mind if I make my own decision, sailor? Go ahead, Miss Cameron. Kathy's involved with a man named Norton. Oh, yes, I've heard of him. He owns the Blue Moon. How did your daughter get mixed up with a guy like that? I don't know. All I know is that since she's met him, she's... Well, she's changed. She's a stranger to me. She's on that boat all the time. I have an easy solution. Why don't you just tell Mr. Norton to buy your daughter from the boat? I've tried that. He laughed in my face. He told me... Hold it a minute. Sailor, there's a guy over there at the cigar counter. Take care of him. Go ahead, Sailor. I'll remember every word Mr. Cameron says and tell you later. All right, Cameron? Well... Norton knows something about Kathy I don't. I know my daughter. It's more than just a lust for gambling. Please, will you help me, Shannon? Go there, talk to Kathy. Convince her that she she need never go back to that ship again. Please, please, I'll, I'll give you anything. Put your wallet back. Your daughter's in trouble with Norton? I'll, I'll try to straighten her out. You don't understand, Shannon. I'm a rich man. When I bring Kathy back, you'll give me a box of lump sugar? Too loud, Paul. You disturb our boss. Tell Greg I want to see him. Our boss sleeps. His brain goes all the time. He needs rest. Wake him up, Mickey. I've got something for him. I don't wake up, boss, till he asks me. Wake me up, Mickey. Who wants me? It's your croupier, Paul. The wheel jockey says he's got something. He can keep it to himself till you get your share of sleep, boss. Let him in. Our boss says for me to let you in. I'll let... Uh, you have something for me, Paul? Well, give it to me, but make it tender, because I just woke up. I uh, was in Shannon's place a little while ago. And you had fun. Rub my neck, Mickey. There's a crick in it. Yeah, thanks, boss. Ah. Oh, that's good. That's very good. There was someone else there. Kathy Cameron's father. Now the other side, Mickey. Ah. He's sick with worry about his daughter. Wants Shannon to take her away from you. You three must have made a jolly group. They were so wrapped up in it, Shannon, his girl, Cameron. They thought all I wanted was to buy a pack of cigarettes. You're a good boy, Paul. The thing of many talents. Shannon's coming out here to the boat. I thought you'd need to know. Paul's a good boy, isn't he, Mickey? I'm better for you, boss. He can't do the things for you I can do. He can't... Of course he can't, Mickey. Nobody can. That's why I keep you around, isn't it? See? See? That's why he keeps me around. That's why... Sure, Mickey. <laughs> so they want to take Kathy away from me. 
And Kathy will never leave me. Because I fixed it that way, didn't I, boss? Mm Mm-hmm. Because you threw yourself in front of her car because she thought she'd killed you. That's why you've got to keep out of her sight, because for as long as she thinks you don't exist, she belongs to me. Till I use her up. Her and her daddy's money. And so clean. She loses it to me at the roulette table. Clean and legitimate. Boss, this Shannon could... No one's going to spoil it, Mickey. Not a well-paying corpse like you, I give you my word. Look through the porthole, Greg. That's Shannon's boat coming alongside. Go hold his hand, Paul. Then bring him to me. I want to tell him how he can't part two sweethearts like Kathy and me. You do me and my gambling ship great honor, Mr. Duval, Mr. Shannon. Your boy brought us to you. We asked for Kathy Cameron. He didn't want to deny me the pleasure of meeting you two. He has standing orders to deliver to me first the illustrious, the renowned. You see, Slate, I keep telling you that's what we are. You never believe me. Go on, Mr. Norton. You were saying... That I would have shuddered if you came aboard and deprived me of yourselves. Gee, you're smooth, Mr. Norton. The way you talk. The waxed mustache. That's the only word for you. Smooth. So you saved yourself a shudder, Norton. Now, is it all right if we go find Kathy? She may not care for you disturbing her at the gambling table. Now, what did you want with Miss Cameron? We're going to take her back to Havana with us, Norton, because her father's lonesome for her. He's a funny guy. He thinks his daughter ought to spend more time at home. Any objections? Uh, I only asked you because you stuck your nose in. (laughs) No objections. I only fear for you. You think you can stop me? I know I can. However, Miss Cameron is in the casino on A deck. And uh, please sign the guest book. I'll want something to remember you by. Number 12 on the black. Black page, 12 page. Miss Cameron? What? Mind if we talk to you? Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. You mind if we talk to you? Go away. I can't do that, Miss Cameron. Why don't you two try the poop deck? It's a good place to jump from. Jump from? Oh, your preposition is dangling, Kathy. Your father must have picked the wrong finishing school for you. My father? Oh, you made me miss my bet. Sailor. I know. You want me to kibitz that hot game of old maid over there. Come on, Kathy. Let's get some air, you and I. You're hurting my arm. It's an advice I use to make myself clear. Come on. I made a suggestion to you before concerning the poop deck. Or if that doesn't suit you, why don't you try it from this rail? You're just a kid, Kathy. You've got to grow up a little more before that kind of talk becomes you. Oh, you think I'm a kid. Nineteen, twenty. Kids that old and women over 40 use lipstick the way you do. Another suggestion. A girl 19 is better for you. Want to know why? I'll put my arms around you and show you. Hey, take it easy. And hold you. Okay, Norton. Yeah! Ah. Did you notice, Miss Cameron? I only had to do it once. Right in back of the neck. Get him out of here. I think I'll give him back to Miss Duval. (laughs) Don't you think I'm considerate? Mr. Slate, he stood on moonlit deck. Man from behind hit him in he neck. Lady sailor, she bring from ship blue moon. Her winnings to date, Mr. Slate in a swoon. Because they tried to do one very good deed. Bring daughter back to father who cried his need. He waved at them, a face full of war. Mr. Slate, he said, don't cry, I go. You see, Slate, you didn't make such a hobby of helping people. This never would have happened to you. Yeah, that's just what a fellow needs at a time like this, sailor, a kind word. Now you are hurt, Mr. Slate, because you love a good deed too much? <laughs> yeah, I live for the moment when I can bring a wandering girl back to her daddy. Let Norton have her. I don't think I could go through this again. You go through with it. Your neck is my neck. I read that once in a poem. I'm going back to the Blue Moon, sailor. Mend me real nice because I've got some things to do there. I want to look good. 
Uh Uh-uh. If you go back, they'll kill you. Those were Norton's parting words to me. He said, tell him not to come back. Next time, I'll give them to you in pieces. You're a complicated man, Slate. I could never put you back together again. Give me another whiff of your smelling salt, sailor. That ringing noise is back in my skull. You're a ham bone. That's the telephone. Shannon's place, Sailor Duval. Mr. Shannon, please. Oh, uh-huh. It's for you, Slate, the man who grows sugar. He's in a tizzy. Anyway, he makes sounds like a tizzy. I'll let you know. Slate Shannon speaking. Forget it, Mr. Shannon. Forget ever I've called on you. I don't need you any longer. Where are you, Mr. Cameron? I'm at home. But you're not to come here. You're not to... Get me a clean shirt, sailor. I've got to see a man who doesn't need me. Shannon, I told you... What's this all about, Cameron? Did anyone follow you here? I didn't bother to look. Let's go inside. If they follow you... Inside. Norton's got you scared too, huh? You don't know what you're doing coming here. Who did he threaten? You or your daughter? Get out of here. You made a big noise when I first met you, Cameron. Now all I hear is chicken. Your daughter needs help. What happened to all your worry about her? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. You're kidding. No! Let go of me. You're going to calm down. There. That's better. Now, don't let us throw you. It's just a matter of age and condition. They'll kill her. Now, they won't kill her. That's not what you're afraid of. Yes, yes. They're taking all your money through her. Killing you would be a safer investment. That way, they'd get the money a lot faster. I... I don't want to die. Neither do I. You started something with me. Now it's got to be finished. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall and the second act of our story. I give you two words, Slate. You're crazy. Yeah, I get psychotic when I'm beat over the head. Now look, it's three o'clock in the morning. Go get some sleep. I've gotten better prizes than you on the bottom of a crackerjack box. Why don't you do what I tell you? Look, if you tried to handle the bold venture now, you'd drive her into the rocks. In your condition, you... have got a condition. The man said he'd kill you if you came out to the blue moon again. He said that... Aren't you going to help me aboard our boat? All right. Sometimes I wonder why I even bother. I had a spaniel once who had better manners than you. Talk to me, Slate. Out of the way. You're going to give me trouble. Who are you talking to? Out of the way. Taylor. What do you want? Come here. Look at the motor. Wires all over the place. Someone's... Someone's come aboard. Who's there? I can't see your face. Who is it? But you can see my gun, can't you? Who are you? How about you, Mr. Vall? Can you see it? Uh, move it a little to the left. Thanks. My, it's pretty in the moonlight. If you get that boat fixed, take it north. If you take it south, you might get too close to the blue moon. Then everything will blow up in your face. I've been pushed around long enough. I've got about... And next time, I'll put the bullet into your head, Shannon, instead of into the woodwork of your boat. Want to try? No? (laughs) See? You can be sensible. Good night, mechanics. You do yourself nicely on my money, Paul. Your apartment, charming. The decor, excellent taste. And now that I've performed the amenities, you have something for me? 
It'll take Shannon a long time to fix his boat. And you convinced him not to annoy us anymore? Mm, it's hard to tell with a man like Shannon. Yes, you're ever so right. And it's up to you, my dear Kathy. If Shannon should discover you're a murderess, a hit-and-run killer, they'd take you away from me. And that would make you desolate, wouldn't it? You wanted me to do something? Just tell me. Don't claw at me like a fat cat. Emotions have their way with you, don't they, my dear? All right. Call Shannon's place. Ask for Miss Duval. Tell her to come here because you need her so desperately. In ten minutes. You do need her, Kathy. So you won't waste your precious life away in prison. Shannon's place, Sailor Duval speaking. This is Kathy, Miss Duval. Kathy Cameron. Is Mr. Shannon there? No, he's sitting up with a sick boat. He's up now. Good. Listen, you must come here alone. 16 Paseo Gomez, apartment 12. In 10 minutes, if it matters to you whether I live. Well, that's the other side of town. How do I get there this time of night? There are no cabs. What do I do? Wave a wand over a pumpkin? Oh, you must. Please, find a way. Well, maybe King Moses will lend me his jalopy. What's wrong, Kathy? Why do you In want... In 10 minutes, Mr. Val. The way you wanted it, Greg? Your choice of words was exquisite, my dear. And it is a matter of whether you live. <laughs> Dum, da, dum, dum, da, da, da. Hey, watch out, you crazy fool! Look, I, I didn't see you. I, oh, you're hurt, aren't you? I'll go get help. Hey there! Am oh, I glad to see somebody? This man. Ran... I saw what happened. Get a doctor, will you? Your car was weaving from side to side. You ran this man down. What are you talking about? He just ran out in front of the car. And you tried to run away. If I hadn't stopped you, you'd have just left the man lying there. You know something? You don't have anything to worry about as long as you listen to me. You know something? Now your voice fits your face. First it was your face. You spin the wheel on the blue moon. And your voice happened a little while ago, aboard our boat. Wait a minute. It doesn't matter who I am. You hit that man. Ouch! Hey, you out of your mind, lady? Did I pinch you too hard? You're supposed to be dead. Hey, we got a clever one on our hands, Paul. Yeah, she's done being clever. Throw her in the car, Mickey. The boss will tell you where to throw her after that. Welcome, Mr. Slit. I got coffee perking for you in the kitchen. Ah. Uh. Thanks, King. You didn't have to wait up for me. What I have and have not to do, Mr. Slate, is my own affair. I go bring your coffee. Oh, no coffee. Stay here, King. Sing to me. Right now, I need sleep. I do not think sleep will come to you, Mr. Slate. You just sit there and watch it. It will not come because Miss Salo is not here. If she wants to roam Havana this time, and I'd let her. I got other things on my mind. Two hours ago, there came a phone call. Miss Saylor, scribble address on pad, borrow my auto. Here is the address. I think you better go look for her, Mr. Slate. Because <laughs> you're afraid she'll have gone with that heap. Take 20 bucks out of the register, King. That'll take care of it. Because the call came from Miss Kathy Cameron. Huh? I told you sleep would not come, Mr. Slate. Banging on the right door, mister. Yeah. Banging on the right head. Oh! Ah. Ah. Now we'll drag you inside. Come on, up on your feet. Get with it, Buster. Start talking. What's the matter with you? Oh. Up. This is where we were ten seconds ago. Start talking. Uh, not gonna get you anyplace, Shannon. You know my name. Huh? Oh. That's for taking the liberty. What did you do with Sailor? Blue Moon. She's there. How come she's there? You're going to answer me, Buster, because you happen to be fresh off the Blue Moon. You're the guy who spins the roulette wheel. I tried to frame her. 
Didn't work. How? Make like hit and run. Blackmail. Little guy, Mickey, he used to make a living at it. Run in front of the car, make out he's hurt. People get scared. Pay off. The sailor was too smart. Didn't bite. Same gambit you pulled on Kathy Cameron, huh? Get out of it, Shannon. You know, for a guy who spins a roulette wheel all day, how come you keep one in your apartment? Hobby. Uh-huh. Hobby. And you'll enjoy this. I read where a croupier in Monte Carlo practiced and practiced. He got good. He could put that ball in the black slot or the red slot almost every time he wanted. You're buying grief. He couldn't do it every time, but his average was great. All right, all right. Like you and Norton are doing to Kathy Cameron. Blackmailing her on a hit-and-run caper. She pays off by playing the wheel, loses money every night. Knows it's rigged against her and can't do anything about it. <laughs> Stealing money legal. Uh-huh. Because I woke you from a deep sleep. Oh! I give it back to you. Hey, amigo. Your boat for hire? Let me hear a number, senor. Five bucks. Not the right number. Try Carlos with the cat boat. Ten. Ten bucks. Put your money where my hand is. Here. Eight bucks and change. Blue moon, Skipper. She's anchored a few miles out. First, I count the change. Look, you. You want the blue moon, senor? Then let me count the change. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Oh, here is the other penny. You, you almost didn't make it, senor. You want I should wait for you, senor? Yeah, wait. I give you a hand up the side. Now, this rope hanging down from the side. Just hold the end of it. I'm going up hand over hand. And I'll pick a cabin, Shannon, and see how your luck is. Sailor. 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 It's the middle of the night. Yeah, isn't it, though? I'll get back to you. Sailor. Is that you, Slate? Let me in. I can't. The door's locked. You got a hairpin? What's the matter? Night wind playing hard with your hair, too? Slip it under the door. All right, here. Where did you learn how to pick a lock? A friend of mine taught me. Gee, that reminds me, I owe her a letter. I'll stay like this, sailor. It's been too long since I felt your arm against my cheek. Just think. All this while, there's only been a hairpin. But... Get back in there, sailor. Put your hair up. I'll be back. Can't get away, Shannon. You made a mistake, Shannon. I'm going to find you in that boiler room and kill you. Shannon. Well, I've got to hand it to you, Shannon. You tried. Too bad you had to die on a coal pile. You almost... Come on down to the coal pile with me. I'll brain you. Start with this. I can still hear you. Can't hear you anymore now, Norton. Slade, are you all right? Look, I spoiled the nice clean shirt you washed for me. I'll wash your other one. First, there's a couple of guys on this boat. I've got to collect them for the police. What about Kathy? She's got nothing more to worry about. Her father can get her. Well, it happened again, Slate. You did your good deed, and you got your lumps for it. Don't you get tired of it. Till the next time. Let's get out of here, sailor. All fixed, sailor. The last wire's in place. The bold venture's gonna run like a dream. Fine. Where are we going? Well, I didn't say we were going anyplace. I just said the bold venture'd run like a dream. You want to hear it? If it makes you happy. All right. 
Wait till you hear that motor purr. What kind of a dream does that sound like? Oh, I had it running a minute ago. Let me try. What'd you do to it? Touched it gently. You want to see how? See? Your eyes, your cheeks, your lips. You purr too, don't you? <laughs> Full speed ahead, sailor. There's a smooth sea tonight. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. <laughs>